I think this is going to be the hot app at South by Southwest this year. Uh, <laughs> I, so who are you? I'm we'll talk about why. Yeah, I'm Paul Davison, and uh, I'm the founder of Highlight. Yep. And Highlight is a mobile app that helps you learn more about the people who are around you. So the way it works is it's pretty simple. You install the app, you sign in with Facebook, and that's it. Uh, it's just on after that. And so if uh, and so if if our phones get together like ours did this morning, yes. it just shows, hey, this person's near you right That's now, right. That's and right. then I can uh, message you, and yep. why, it, I saw this go through a party, yeah. you know, and I said, man, this is very, very viral, because yeah. everybody wanted to get on it, it's a really interesting, but simple idea, Yeah. and I think at South By, it's going to be like crack. <laughs> I, I hope so, I mean, I just got another one. Um, you just got another one. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is really simple, right, if you're standing near me, then... Uh, your profile will show up on my phone. And if Highlight sees someone nearby that it thinks you might find interesting, it'll send you a notification. So it might tell me that my friend is across the street. Or it might tell me that this person standing in the room with me knows my sister. Or it, it just sort of runs quietly in the background throughout the day and surfaces these hidden connections. And um, so, so, would, so will it tell you that Gary Vaynerchuk has just walked in the room if he was using it? If he's on Highlight, it would, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it would, he say, would it say, this, this guy's like a super connector, or has it, lots of wine? Or? You know, it's, it starts out really simple. And um, so what we use to determine whether something is interesting right now is um, which of these people are your friends, or have a bunch of friends in common with you, or have other things in common with you, like they went to the same school, or, um, you know, they like a lot of the same bands. And it, it's, the app in general is something that can start really simple, but over time should get much more sophisticated because there's so much signal that you can get um, based on how people are engaging with the app and, and what really constitutes a meaningful match. Um, I think... How, how close, first of all, how close do you need to be? Because I, yeah. I've gotten hits when I was just driving down the street. So yeah. I'm, uh, like I drove down the, by the Starbucks that you were hanging out yeah. at. It, it pinged me that you were nearby. Yeah. And uh, that's sort of cool, but it's not very useful. Exactly. Right? And, 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 you know, there's so much signal, again, that you can use. And initially we're being pretty binary about it. They're either nearby or they're not. And usually that's within about a block or two. Um, but in, in part, that's a function of the location technology that's available today. You know, yeah. GPS is good in maybe 50 meters or so, but, but with Wi-Fi fingerprinting of indoor spaces and Bluetooth low energy and all these new technologies, that's just going to get better and better and higher resolution. And I think that ultimately the, the distance that we're using should vary depending on the context, but the user shouldn't have to think about it. So if you and I are friends and we're three miles apart and we're in San Francisco, that's not very interesting if we both live there. But if we both live in San Francisco and we're in Ohio and we're three miles apart, that probably is interesting, right? And, and so we don't, we want it to be something that's sort of like the keypad on the iPhone or the Google search box where to the user it's really simple and they don't have to think about anything and, and um, you know, nothing really changes and confuses them. But under the hood there's all this math going on that just makes it better and better and better over time. Now, a lot of people are going, this is way over the freaky line. <laughs> like, <laughs> privacy? Oh, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> there's no privacy. I mean, I see everybody who's near me using Highlight. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's an opt-in system. Exactly. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. Exactly. And if you want to use it and you want to broadcast where you are to yeah. people near you. Now, can only your friends see it, or is it anybody on Highlight can see it? Yeah, so right now... Tell me a little bit about how it works. Absolutely. So um, there's a setting right now that just allows you to manage privacy, and again, it's really simple simple right now, you can make your profile visible to everyone or to friends of friends only. Okay. And I imagine that'll get more sophisticated over time, but um, there are a lot of, this is the type of product that is, it's really exciting to us because the potential is, the potential is so big if you can get it right, but it's very hard to get right because there are hundreds of seemingly small but really important product details that you have to fine tune to, to nail the user experience and the social engineering. You know, how do you build something that's fun but safe and trusted and built off real identity and mutual friends and something that women can use and feel safe on and married people can use without seeming creepy and something where you're not getting bothered when you don't want to get bothered. And, and, and the nice thing about it is it's very lightweight. It doesn't show you a lot about the person, yeah, right? That's it, right? It shows like how many friends in common you have. Yeah. It shows you a little tagline from that person. It shows you a picture, yep. but it doesn't show you anything that's on their Facebook account, like, you know, what bands they like or, you know, what well, school 
school they went to. If you also like that or went to that school, then it will show it to you right now. Got it. Man. Yeah, but these are all things we're learning. I mean, it's so it's so primitive right now, and there's. A, well, let, show me what my account looks like yeah. on your phone because yeah, we're we were nearby each other. So. Um, there you go. So, so that's, that's the preview. A picture. So we have 24 friends in common. Right. I live in Half Moon Bay. Yep. It has my title at Rackspace. Yep, right? and you can see all the friends that we have in common. And um, you can see we both like Jay-Z and Kiva Nirvana and IO Ventures. And, um, and then it can show you a history of all the times that we've crossed paths. Right. So most recently today at 10.53 a.m., I was right there and you were right there. Awesome. And, uh, and on December 11th, when I first saw this, I was at a, a party with you, right? That's right. Right together. <laughs> exactly. And so we, all, we have a running history of the past we cro yeah, where, it, where we cross. It's really interesting. It, it just quietly runs in the background and records this history of all the interesting people who have crossed your path. And so initially, the use cases are mostly about, it's mostly about the serendipity, right? You, you install it, and it just makes your day more fun. And um, you know, you'll find out that, that someone that you know is nearby, or a lot of times what we'll see is we're talking to someone and they have highlight and we're looking at the phone and we're saying, oh, how do you know that person? And, and they'll say, I went to high school with him. And you'll say, oh, I, I did semester at sea with him. And, and these unusual connections are far more common than you realize. And um, the encounters are actually far more frequent than we would have thought. I think your friend being on the other side of the wall or someone standing next to you knowing 10 of your friends. It, it's always been there and it's all around us, but there's just never been anything to surface it. No, I, I really enjoy it and I enjoy seeing who's around me and stuff. And yeah. I, I text them and you know, say, hey, we're in the same neighborhood, let's yeah. go get a drink or something exactly. like that. And so it's, it's just sort of fun, but as you, as you see <coughs> more people on it, all these interesting new use cases emerge. Like, yeah. how often have you been in a room with someone and you know you've met them, but you can't remember their name? I mean, everyone has that problem, right? And we already have one of our users say, they were at a cafe in Palo Alto last week and they, they, they saw someone who was an acquaintance, but they couldn't remember their name, and so they kind of pretended they didn't see them, and then highlight went off. And they saw their name and went over and said hi. And, and it's so funny because these are academic use cases that we had imagined happening and now they're starting to happen. Or the one that I talked about before, the name game. I mean, how many times when you meet someone do you say, oh, you were Stanford 99, do you know so-and-so? You can just open your phone and see who you know in common. Yeah. Or to your point about the history, maybe I could say, you look really familiar, you do too, where did we meet? And we could just look through the history and say, oh yeah, it was at the Founders Brunch on this date with these three people. And, and there are all sorts of other things that it can do eventually. Um, but we're starting with something that's really simple. Yeah. Um, this is coming out today, right? And um, it's for iPhone only? Or is uh, it right for now Android it's as well? Only. I mean, okay. we absolutely want it to be Android, but we really want to get the product right first. Yeah. And, and, and this is a very exper This is a different kind of app because it's very experimental. It's, it's something yeah. that people haven't seen and are like a little... Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, it's a freaky... Uh, when you first heard <laughs> it, you, when, I, when I first tell people about it, they're like, why would I do that? Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, there's so much... I, I, think, I think that there's a lot you could say about that. Um, this technology is just now becoming possible. And... and Learning more about other people. It's not about meeting people. It's just about having something that surfaces this information. And yeah. I feel like that's a very universal thing. If you look at what's happened online over the last five or ten years, you can see we love talking about ourselves. Um, you know, we spend all this time curating these profiles and we care deeply about how we come across to others. And, and we love learning about other people and reading their feeds and looking at their photos and looking at their LinkedIn profiles before we meet them. Um, but it's only recently online that we've had the tools to surface this information in a really lightweight way. You think yeah. about Facebook and Twitter and how they popularize these new systems where you can just sort of take updates and put them into the ether and, and if people choose to follow them, they can. But um, they, they dramatically reduce the friction in sharing stuff online. But in the offline world, we have these same desires, right? We wear t-shirts of our, of our colleges and, and sweatshirts of our favorite sports teams and hats of bands that we like and we care about how we dress and present ourselves and we love people watching and it's a very natural instinct. Um, but we've never had the tools that allow us to just surface information about ourselves in this really lightweight way. Yeah. And so it, it's really not about, again, it's not about meeting people, it, it, it's really just Having that information, we think that will naturally lead to conversations and it will help you with 
um, you know, remember details about your existing friends. And, and well, it's interesting because I meet a lot of people. And I, I was at the Consumer Electronics Show. You meet hundreds of people. Yeah. You exchange business cards, or yeah. or in some cases, you try to do a, a bump with the bump app. Yep. And it doesn't work all that well. It, it when it works, it's great. And then you have their their information, their you know phone number and their email uh -huh. address, and maybe a little bit more. This is a little bit different, and uh, I find it very interesting because I don't have to bump them. But can I can I save any of their information and put it in my contact list? Because it's sort of siloed right now. Isn't Not it? yet, but that's a very good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, this is what we're going to do at South by, right? We're going to go to the Mashable party or the Rackspace party, and oh, Robert Scoble's in the room, yay! You know, and and people will come over and say, hey, I saw you're in the room. And then they'll want to save my information, or they'll want to request, more, you know, the full Monty, the full yep. Facebook friendship, yep. right? You yeah. know, or, <laughs> there are a lot of there are a lot of different ways that this technology can be used. Um, sometimes it's about knowing that your friends are nearby you, but you can't see them. Sometimes it's about you know I'm having a conversation with you, and I want to have more context, and I want to you know see what we have in common that we haven't that we didn't already know. Yep. Sometimes it's, I see you across the room and I want to remember your name. Um, and, and, and there are all these other use cases. And we need to build the feature set that is going to uh, support those use cases, right? And, and it's, there's so much that we need to do. And it's so rough right now. And there's so little that it does. And there are all these problems we know we have with it. And um, you know what we really want to do right now is just get it out there. Yeah. Um, now is this going to work in every city or? Yeah. Okay. So starting uh, worldwide today, or U.S. Solar? Just U.S. right now. Just right. U.S.? Yeah. All right. Hopefully open up worldwide soon. But, um, you know, right but now. But it'll work better in a city with high uh, population density, yeah. with a high population density of early adopters, right? Because yeah, early, you right. know, the more early adopters, like this is why I think it'll be really great at South by Southwest because yeah. there's a lot of people with iPhones yep. and there's a lot of people who like to try new things exactly. and see if they work. Yeah. And that's why I think, uh, you know, in a month, I think this will be a lot of fun to try out. Yeah. Um, uh, how are you guys funded? Um, so we're still just finalizing some details on that right now, but I'd love to tell you about it in a little bit. All right. Yeah. So early adopter uh, area. <laughs> um, and do, 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 what else do I need to know about this thing? Because it's pre, it's free, right? It's oh free yeah, app. absolutely. And how are you guys going to make money with this? Because there's lots of ways to make money with location. I mean, yeah. Foursquare Source shows you can do offers and yeah. you can do ads and stuff like that. But are, are you thinking at, at all about no, business models? I think that. Well, what are you telling the investors that you're pitching? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that um, this is really hard to build because you know, from a product and a design and an interaction and distribution perspective because there are so, there are so many things you have to get right. Uh, but that's why it's fun. And the other reason why it's fun is because if you can do it, you're literally giving people a sixth sense. And, and from what we've seen so far, you, you're, it, it just makes the world so much more fun when you can surface these hidden connections and, and help people just sort of connect with their friends more and be friendlier around other people that they've just met and, and just know more. And so yeah. I think it's very hard, but if you can do it, it, it changes the world in a pretty profound way. And, um, you know, whether it's, whether it's us that, that does it or someone else, um, this is going to happen and it's going to change the world a lot. And I think there are a lot of ways you can make money off of that. Look at how much money people spend on recruiting and how much money people spend to meet the right partner and how much money people spend to reach people, uh, you know, a certain, a certain demographic in a certain place. I mean, I think the more important thing right now is just um, building an awesome product and, and getting a lot of people using it. Now, it only works with Facebook right now. A lot of my friends on yeah. Google Plus have deleted yeah. their uh, Facebook pages yeah. and stuff. So what happens if you don't have a Facebook account? Right now you have to sign up for one. All right. Yeah. So. It's, it's an interesting product decision, right? Because um, I think that having real identity is very important. We really want this to be, again, something that's safe and trusted and, and fun, but, but something that's really based on your real identity. And mutual friends are such an important part in, in building trust or yeah. quickly establishing trust and giving you an icebreaker. And so. Um, I think Facebook was a really good uh, starting point for this. Um, yeah. I don't now, does know. this put anything on the open graph? Does this say, uh, 
Robert and Paul were in the same room together, and every okay. all my friends see, oh, we were together or something. Like that. I okay. mean, we'll probably. I mean, yeah, I'm sure we'll be thinking about that stuff, but we really want to do it. For those who way. don't know what Open Graph is, it's the API system that puts stuff on the new ticker yeah. and puts stuff on the new timeline, right? Yeah. So I, you, I, you see people like, you know, Paul Davison listen to ACDC on Spotify, yeah, right? right? That's Open Graph, yeah. right? So I think that. Um, there are probably some really interesting things that you can do there, especially with the mutual friends ties and things like that, but we just want to do it in a way that's um, very opt-in and very transparent and something where if people want to publish it, they can. Um, but I don't know, I think privacy and trust are so important with a product like this, and so yeah. we want to err on the side of... Yeah, especially um, since you're right from the get-go, you're pushing that freaky line, right? Yeah. Because it's already over the freaky line for most people. It, it is for, it, it, you know, I've, we've actually been surprised at how receptive people are to this stuff. We talked to a lot of people before we started building it, and we were asking questions like, you know, with the name, what is it, first name, first name, last initial, full name, and most people said, you know, I think, I think I'm think i fine sharing my full name, and I think that's more interesting. It's also, uh, it's something that's changing over time. Yep. When we talk to our younger users, you ask them, and they say, yeah, of course I'd be willing to share that with everyone, obviously. and. And I think that most interesting social products push the limit a bit, or, or at least our standards change over time. I mean, look at how much we're sharing on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Foursquare and, and all these services. Um, I think initially you put something out there that, that feels a bit open and, and strange and, and scary to people, and a, a lot of people say, that's weird, I wouldn't do it. But then a small percentage of the population tries it, and they discover that it's actually fun and rewarding for them. And over time, more people decide that the benefits of being part of that outweigh the privacy that they have to give up. And, yeah. and so it's a really important question, and it's one of the things we are, like, it, it's probably our biggest focus. But, um, but I think you'll find that, that people are more willing to share this sort of stuff than you now expect I, if you give them a good experience. I, I totally agree. It's not every day that I see a product with a high virality coefficient. What I mean by that is... You told one person, yeah. and they tell like two or three or four yeah. people at a party, and it's spread through the party really fast. Yeah. What is your problem is going to be dealing with scale and dealing with too much noise? Because okay. if I yeah, if I walk <laughs> into a party good. at South by Southwest and I get five hundred no, uh, you're absolutely right. People yeah. near five hundred people are nearby. Yep. It's too much noise. Exactly. There's no value exactly. there. Exactly. We're thinking about that a lot. I mean, what happens if there are ten thousand people in a, at a concert or in a stadium that? open it up at once. What does that look like? It's got to look a lot different than it looks like now, right? Um, and, and so it, it's funny with the virality stuff, though, because when you think about hyperlocal products, they're just different, yeah. right? Um, if I want the other people in the room to be on this app, how can I invite them? Because I don't have their email addresses. And what's the analog to the, to the concept of a friend or a follower with this sort of product? And if you want people to publish stories out to Facebook or Twitter, what's their incentive to do it? Is this sort of inherently more of a private activity? I mean, there are all these new questions that are really interesting and hard to figure out. Well, I'm going to put it up on Google Plus and, <laughs> and Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> so <laughs> so a, few, a few thousand people will hear about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, and hopefully there will be a, 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 hopefully there'll be a few percent of the people at South by enough to make it fun. Yeah. So when you walk into a party and you see you know, 10 or 50 or 100 people on yeah. it, but it, it, I think it will be very quickly a problem. One it, is your servers got to stay up because, like Twitter at South by Southwest went down in 2007. Right, it kept yeah. going down. And do assuming you, want, you can do you keep that, good provider, I or? think I know a few of them. <laughs> 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 okay. I can help you out with that. But it, you know, it's it, it, it's more than just hosting, right? It's yeah. it's uh, architecture of your systems. Yep. And I, I'm assuming you did a good job there. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, it, it, there is that problem of there's going to be s too much noise and not enough signal. The, or the one thing that we know about this product is that it's going to look a lot different than what it looks like now. Yeah. Right? And, and to your point earlier, just about the virality stuff, I think there, there are a couple other things about that. One is um, we didn't really build it for this use case, but a lot of people enjoy using it with their friends. And a lot of people want to invite their friends and know that their close friends are next door or that they just walk by them. Um, and so... Uh, a lot of people invite their friends, and so you get virality through there. And also, I think ultimately it's the type of thing that grows through in-person word of mouth. Yeah. Because you'll be out with your friends, and your, your phone will vibrate, and you'll see who it is, and you're looking around for the person. And, and this technology, not necessarily the product, but the technology is interesting enough that um, 
people will tell their friends about it, and, and that's what we find is happening right now. So, so we don't know, but we just, what we're doing right now, we, I mean, we don't even, I hate the idea of doing press before the product is quite there, yeah. and I know there's so much that we have to do. It's but so there's a chicken and egg. You need to get some people using it, and well, early I mean, adopters. The big thing is we want to just open it up, and we want to open up to more cities and take down the invite wall, and we want to um, just have more people try it and start learning these things. And so, so that's why we're opening up today. We just want to get it out there and, and see what people think and get their feedback and, and get going. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Um, so the website is h-i-g-h-l-i-g.ht, the word highlight, yep. or you can go to get highlight, it redirects there, and it's just highlight in the app. Um, and are you guys on Twitter and Facebook? It's highlight in the app store, it's at highlight on Twitter, and um, it's a URL that I don't have memorized on Facebook. <laughs> and are you going to be on Google Plus as well? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah. thank you so much. And you're Paul Davidson, right? Paul Davidson, yeah. Davidson? D-A-V-I-S-O-N, yeah. Yep. Everyone messes it up. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.